full self-driving before we shift to the rest of the mailbag? I, it's a big deal. Like, so mm-hmm. for, I mentioned the reason, the, the chief reason to get it. Well, uh, there's three reasons for me, two reasons to get a Tesla, I guess. Number one, I do think for someone who does what I do, it is actually important and useful to have it and experience it and use it regularly. Yeah. I do think there's a real, I don't think people appreciate how good it is. Like, like it's, it's actually phenomenal. It actually does go door to door. In my experience, I would say 99% of the time, um, I don't mm-hmm. know if I've done a hundred drives yet, but very, very rarely do do need to break in. And just to have an appreciation of how far, in, as far as living in the future, the implications of this for cars and also how that manifests for things like robots and things along those lines. We talked like a year ago about Tesla's approach, how they sort of reset. We're not going to do this deterministic. They tore, they basically tore out all their software. It's going to be pure neural nets. Now there's still questions. Is video alone going to be enough? And Mm -hmm. it's great that Tesla is taking a very different approach than Waymo. Waymo is like all the way full autonomy from the beginning. Tesla is, you do need that human in the seat because of, of all the sort of, you know, is it going to be good enough and all the regulatory issues. But the yeah. difference is Waymo is in what, 10 cities now. I have a Tesla in Madison, Wisconsin that I can use right now. And mm-hmm. so I think it's useful to be aware of that in touch with it. What's going on. Um, that said, I love driving. Um, so I like the, so the, this the, is actually a question I have reading back, looking at Hansen's email here. When we start to wonder about the second order effects of full self driving, I mean, on one hand, some of what you wrote about was pretty mind blowing where Tesla is going to have the Optimus robots or wants to have Optimus robots in its robo taxis, potentially delivering packages to monetize those that hardware in off hours we'll see whether that ever comes to fruition but it all seems pretty feasible but in right. terms by of the, the way the way to think about elon Musk's pronouncements is his track record is what he says actually usually ends up happening just, just never ever on later. the timeline that he <laughs> yeah. says so um so the, the like people well, there's line really... of sight there's line of sight to like three or four different aspects of what he's that's exactly it. there this approach the neural network approach sort of pure machine learning in terms of autonomous operation the fact that's working for cars is why you should be bullish about the robots working because the only mm-hmm. way you're going to you're not going to deterministically program a humanoid robot that is going to be effective there's too many edge cases too many sort of difficult situations but if it works to actually just throw massive amounts of data and compute at the problem that is that's working for cars it is working you yeah. get in a tesla go for a drive it is working and that to your point, means there is line of sight to it working for things like humanoid robots. Okay, so on full self-driving and actual humans and the second order effects, does this assume that at some point in the near future, you'll be able to hop in a Tesla and do work during the hour-long commute to your job downtown? Because right now, it doesn't appeal to me to just sit there while my car drives for me as opposed to driving myself, which I frankly prefer, but it could be Even if you're more appealing it. if you can sit there and actually get stuff done for an hour while you're on the commute. But I don't know whether that's like realistic anytime soon. Well, it's funny. This kind of ties back to the aside I made about politics and as far as urbanism and sort of making the situations better. The challenge there is it's a political problem. Like, mm-hmm. I-, I think you can probably make the case that Full self-driving should be like unsupervised full self-driving should be allowed now. It is good enough. The reason it's not is regulatory reasons and it, like insurance reasons, like like who's yeah. liable. Like and those are massive challenges that even if sort of in a theoretical case, all Tesla's driving themselves is better than people driving them because people <laughs> suck at driving. Mm-hmm. That's just it's not that's that a, theoretical. I mean, we might be there already, right? That's, but that's a very that's a very difficult case to make. Like, just that's not how humans work. They they don't do the math like that, and yeah. and so and there, and again, there's lots of variables. Like, I haven't driven it in snow yet. I haven't like driven it in heavy rain. All of these, which are I think you know issues, you know, it, 
there's aspects of the Tesla that's like, yeah, this is a California company that like <laughs> Apple is notorious for this. I think Tesla's in the same boat. Uh, works great in California. Uh, Wisconsin could be uh, something completely different, uh, to, yep. to say the least. But that's going to be sort of a real limitation there. And yeah, that would change the game for me personally completely. Now, you said second order effects. I think there's first order effects, though, in the meantime. Like a friend of mine here, he like I actually saw this, I think it was on threads, someone saying like, wait, people actually like driving? And they, they, they were sort of like processing this. The reason why full self-driving is so appealing to them is mm-hmm. they, they, they associate driving with anxiety of like yeah. being nervous the whole time. And so just sitting there and watching the road is actually freeing. This applied to my wife. My wife drives all over the place. In, it's, it's kind of funny because she drives all over the place in Taiwan, but she's used to driving in Taiwan. Coming to the U.S. is like the roads are bigger, not sure about direction. Totally. If I was driving higher. in Taiwan, I would be pretty anxious navigating my way around Taiwan. I well, mean, the funny thing is, is like, yeah, it's ecosystem. much more difficult to drive in Taiwan. <laughs> it's like, I mean, <laughs> it's not bad. It's better than a lot of Asian countries, but it's a different way of driving because you drive, your right of way is determined by how large your vehicle is. So mm. the, the bus is going to go wherever they want. So when you're driving, you have to be aware of them. If you're in a car, you cannot be overly deferential to the scooters. You have to be aware of the scooters. You don't make sudden turns. But if you need to turn, you just gradually go over and trust they're going to get out of your way. And so if everyone <laughs> followed the law rules over there in Taipei, no, if, perfect. If everyone followed the law perfectly while driving, it'd be gridlock. But it does. Yeah. It works once you sort of know how it works. This, by the way, is another thing where Tesla's are better than Waymo's in my experience. I haven't used Waymo's a ton, but but a little bit. Te- the way Tesla's just go with the flow of traffic, they will speed when appropriate. They'll sort of you know do things that are in the gray area by the law, but anyone driving knows that's what you should be doing. Whereas, whereas Waymo's are much more careful. They never speed, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and so this is, but that's another regulatory challenge. I worry that whenever we get full self-driving, actually, it's going to be neutered. It's going to be almost a worse experience where you feel like the doofus driving down the road at 55. Well, everyone's yep. zooming past you and you're actually creating a more dangerous situation because you're not in the flow of traffic. But at the same time, how do you pass a law that says, OK, cars can speed if it's in like it's it's it gets really, really tricky. And so that's going to be a huge obstacle to sort of figure that out. But to go back to the example, that's one of the reasons I got it when she comes here. It was great. I work at night and she drove my son to school every morning. Um, Mm -hmm. And by she driving, I mean, the Tesla drove and she sat there happy as a clam, Uh, (laughs) you know, took over. You had to take over a couple of times, but yeah, it was fine. She's a good, she's a fine driver. Right. And so she's gone. She's back in Taiwan right now. And it's getting dark super early. It gets dark at like four o'clock here. It's ridiculous. I forgot about that part. And it gets really dark. Uh Uh, My parents are getting older. My dad is having an increasingly difficult time seeing at night yep. and they were at like a church service or something coming back. And my mom was like, that was one of the most terrifying experiences in my life. <laughs> and I'm like, I have the solution for you. Suddenly, as they get older, my dad's a very capable driver. And if something were to happen, he can absolutely take over the wheel. But by and large, if the Tesla can let them continue. And you think about as you're getting older, they go to like a a church service. It's like seeing people and being out and doing all these sorts of things. That's super important that they are going to be able to do longer and with more freedom because the car will drive them there and it will be safer and better. And I got a couple like unhinged emails about like how I would even consider buying a Tesla or whatever. And, And it's so fascinating to, it's like all about the 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 the, the zoom lens that you use. Mm-hmm. Okay, you zoom out. You don't like Elon politically. That's fine. You say, "Oh, he's cut aid programs." Like, what about the poor people? Okay, that's fine. That's one angle. What about my parents? That's another angle that is zoomed yep. in. That is making a tangible difference. If we care about being kind, I yeah. feel like I'm being pretty kind to provide my parents with more freedom as they get older and go out and about. Now, again, I'm not sort of critiquing the viewpoint, just everything depends on the lens that you look at it with. 